I didn't, uh, didn't get into a lot of fights growing up. There were some bullies, bullies that were like, I'll knock the books out of your hands. Now neither of us can read. That sort of thing. <laughs> Not everybody reads, not everybody has to read now because every book gets made into a movie, but book people are getting smart. They're called authors, book people. They start re-releasing the book. When the movie comes out, they put a picture of the actor on the cover, trick people who like movies into buying the book. Like the movie Fight Club came out, they re-released the book and people are like, ooh, Brad Pitt's in this book. <laughs> so far, just words. <laughs> I'll fight you, book. <laughs> then that guy fights that book. Turns out at the end, that guy is that book. Anyway, sorry to spoil the book. So. <laughs> Have y'all seen the movie Final Destination? If you haven't, great choice. But <laughs> here's enough information to make this fun for all. The movie, Final Destination, is about a boy who gets on a plane, the plane takes off and explodes, and everybody dies. But then he wakes up before that happened. It was a vision he had of the future. He's now on the plane before it's taken off. So he's like, we gotta get out of here. This is gonna blow. So they kick him off the plane, because that's what happened if he did that in real life. So far, very realistic movie. So he's off the plane. It does take off. It does explode, just like he saw in his vision. So he's cheated death, and then death follows him and haunts him for the rest of the movie, which is what would happen if you cheat death in a crappy movie. So I get to the end of this hour and a half of my life, and I'm like, what a crap fest. And then I wake up in the theater before it started. <laughs> I'm like, we gotta get out of here. This is gonna blow. <laughs> Was that even a movie? <laughs> oh. You. You. All of you, except for maybe one. <laughs> Some people ask, how do you do it? How do you do comedy? How do you get up there every night and risk that rejection? How do you do it? And here's my secret that I'll reveal to only you and everyone watching. <laughs> I think about what's the worst thing that could happen any given night doing comedy? Is a room full of people hates me and then I never see them again. <laughs> and then I compare that to high school. <laughs> which for me was a building full of rooms of people. Same people every day. So for tonight to be worse than that, y'all would have to hate me, find me later, and be like, see you tomorrow. <laughs> and not just for a half hour, for eight hours a day, five days a week, 30 weeks a year, four years in a row. Can anyone do the math on that? I can, that's why people did not like me. <laughs> I, uh, I have a special online, an hour special, that you can give five stars to if you like it. You can even give five stars to it if you don't like it. Just think about how many stars there are in the galaxy. It's like 100 billion, so five is real low. You got me. <laughs> really stuck it to me. I did get a one-star review that I liked. My favorite one-star review. Here's how it went. Guy goes, I don't know about these jokes. They might be good. He talked too fast. I'm dumb. <laughs> What a twist. I love that it turned out to be more a review of himself than me. He's like, I don't know about this, but I do know about this, and no thank you. I love thinking about this stuff. I, uh, in college, I was a philosophy major. Or was I? What is philosophy? It's a thing. Or is it? You guys get it. Or do you? Okay. How long could this go on for? Forever it couldn't. Or could it? All right, that's the longest I've ever done it. Or is it? Okay, as long as, long as there's a couple of people enjoying it. Or are they? And sometimes I feel like my comedy is like Tetris, where people are like, when is a long one gonna come along and sort of clear all this up? You know what I mean? Just... I took a class in college called The Philosophy of Math. We discussed the great mysteries of mathematics, like are there different sizes of infinity? Were numbers discovered or invented? Why can we not meet women? You know, the great mysteries <laughs> of math. <laughs> mysteries. I am pretty great with women, let's say. Why not? You're not gonna do any research. But the point is, <laughs> I am in an open marriage. It's very open. It's a divorce. And... <laughs> We did the Jewish divorce custom where you take a broken glass and you put it back together. Um, maybe you're familiar with our customs. 
50% of marriages end in divorce. Do you know that? 50%. That's so hot. 50% of marriages, that's one out of every two people. So it's either going to be you or your spouse. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can't argue with the numbers. <laughs> I do have a girlfriend now. I don't have her. She's uh, not in a cage. I have a free range girlfriend and uh, free range, locally sourced, organic, vegan, gluten free girlfriend. That's a GF, GF, gluten free girlfriend. And. Uh, <laughs> We love each other, we live together. We've been together for years now, so great. We live together, we, we don't subscribe to the traditional gender roles, you know? We're like, the man fixes things, and the woman cleans things, so. We live in a broken, dirty house. <laughs> she actually does everything, but. Uh, I love her so much, I've been with her for years, longer, more than double the length of my marriage. It's just the best relationship I've ever been in. Like, my, I was only married for like two years in my 20s. And you know when you get married, every anniversary, there's a traditional material for the gift. Like, so for our first anniversary, it's paper. For our second, it's uh, two sheets of paper that we sign and send to lawyers. And then, <laughs> we didn't make it to even like, fourth is fruit. Our relationship spoiled before fruit ripened, you know? <laughs> But you get good ones eventually. Emerald, sapphires, you know, silver and gold. 75 years together, the 70th anniversary is diamond. And I looked this up, this is true. Do you know what 80 and 90 are? Oak and granite. <laughs> That's what you make coffins and headstones out of. <laughs> Take in till death a little seriously. What's 100, formaldehyde? All right. <laughs> I got you something. <laughs> now, I don't mean to bum anyone out. <laughs> on the topic of death. <laughs> I mean to offer hope, a silver lining of death. Here's the great news about death. Have you heard? Everything that you don't like about life will be gone when you're dead. <laughs> Every single thing that you're not enjoying about living won't exist when you don't. And if that doesn't make you feel good, <laughs> then that means that you're happy right now and that's my gift to you. Do you understand? <laughs> it's win-win. Either life is bad and it's gonna go, or life is good and it's here right now. Embrace it, hold on to it. Also, if life is good, it goes, and if it's bad, it's here. But don't think about those. Just remember the first two, win-win. <laughs> Maybe you don't wanna think about your own death that much, so let's move on. You know who else is gonna die? Is everyone that you don't like. <laughs> Every single person that's ever wronged you will die. Did die, or is dying right now. <laughs> Those are the only options. They either will, did, or are dying. So, if you ever get cut off in traffic, and you're like, I'm gonna murder that guy, what I recommend is, don't. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> oh, they'll die. And your fingerprints will be nowhere near it. <laughs> Let time be your accomplice on this one. It's the perfect crime, because you're not committing it. <laughs> It's like Buddhist clue, if you will. <laughs> there was no one in the nowhere with the nothing. <laughs> and you might be thinking, but I wanna know when and how my enemy's gonna die, not just that they're gonna die. And for you, spiteful people, I'm working on an app. And the app is like a Google alert, but it's for obituaries. So, <laughs> for example, traffic. You just take down the license plate number, you plug it into the app, then you just go about your business. Live your life. Go to your job. Quit your job. You don't like that job. Get a different job. Quit that job. Turns out you don't like jobs. Live in the woods. Live off the grid. Make your own grid. You have a new grid now. You're in charge of your life. You're your own boss. That's your job. You're an artist now. Make your art. Find that art. Make a family. Find your family. Be polyamorous. Be asexual. Be aromantic. Be agender. Be gay or straight or trans or cis or bi or pan or queer. Be binary or non-binary or beyond. Be bad. Be bad. And beyond. Whatever you want to be. Whatever your gender, race, religion, age, size, ability, whoever you are, find yourself and love yourself. Find your people. Love your people. Love your family. Love your friends. Love your community. Love your neighbors. Love your country. Love your world. Love time and space itself. Love the galaxy. Love the universe. Become the universe. Realize you're the universe loving itself and just live and love and live and love for decades and decades and decades and eventually you'll be 90 years old and your phone will be like, bring. You're like, Oh, that jerk's dead. That's nice. <laughs> and then you'll be like, now I can die happy. <laughs> and then you die, and somebody else's phone's like, bring! <laughs> and this 
jerks it. And the circle continues like clockwork. And that app, I'm thinking of calling TikTok. <laughs> Hope nobody's using it. My name's Mike Kaplan. Thank you so much, everyone. You are so wonderful.